I'm Indy Rizzolo and it's my talk again. It's that time when I talk about issues that make the news today. We talk about the Gabby Petito story. The Gabby Petito vanished after going on a road trip with her boyfriend, Brian Laundrie. Upon returning home alone, he claimed that he had no idea of her whereabouts. This was illogical and anyone who looked at forensic files knew that the boyfriend was in some way connected with her disappearance. Gabby aimed to be an Instagram influencer and to this end chronicled to die for videos and pictures of her and her fiance on Instagram. Gabby's Tito never goes outside. <laughs> but why couldn't she prioritize her own safety? Three years earlier, Shannon Watts made a similar choice to present a picture perfect family to the world. She did so at the expense of her own safety. Her story also took a tragic turn as ultimately she ended up dead at the hands of the husband who she presented as the perfect husband on social media. Is the social media craze and the need to present perfection thereon putting the lives of a woman at risk? The lives of women are at risk in all cultures and in all places. Many face death at the hands of intimate partners and family members. According to the 2018 UN report, one in three women were killed by intimate partner violence. Are women becoming endangered species even the places they call home? Gabby Petitos was only 22 years old when her body was found weeks after she vanished. An autopsy revealed the cause of death to be strangulation. Now, this could have been avoided. There were so many red flags that were ignored. Her family and friends should have worked with her to extract her from those from that toxic relationship. Surely they had seen the writing on the wall. There were fights between Gabby and Brian, yet the relationship continued. One friend that Gabby was allowed to have reported that Gabby would often call crying over the fights they had, she and her boyfriend. Gabby's friend also reported that Brian made it difficult for Gabby to have new friends and he would hide her ID so she would not go out. At times, when she and her friend would go to the beach, she would turn up uninvited and gaze at them from afar. This must have felt very creepy. This kind of coercion and monitoring of who she saw and where she was showed. This is a typical case in which the perpetrator, Brian in this case, acted to exercise power to dominate and control all aspects of Gabby's life. Perhaps as the abuse continued and he got more abusive, she became more docile. When it's cracked, before it all descended into death, a 911 caller said as they were driving by, the gentleman referring to laundry was slapping the girl. They reported that they were driving and that they stopped and witnessed the couple run up and down the sidewalk. He proceeded to hit her. Then they hopped into the car and drove off. Although all this was reported in the 911 call, the police did not follow up on this report but took laundries, laundered description of events at face value. Why didn't Gabby refute Laundrie's claims? Why did Gabby, when confronted by the police, 
and had the power to relay the truth to them and so escape her abuser's clutches, refused to do so. Brian is determined to be the victim. But while the Brian's presences dominated the conversation, Gabby took responsibility for the events that led up to the police but being. We want to know the truth if he actually hit you. Because, you know, where did he hit you? Don't worry. Here lies a point of illumination. Women must know and must not take responsibility for the violence done to them. Whose report did the police choose to believe? That of the alpha male, the skilled manipulator of truth, Brian Laundrie, while Gabby was trapped into following their leading. Either the police missed the cues or they succumbed to the misogynistic preferences ingrained in the society. He said that she grabbed the wheel and turned it real hard. She said that she was hitting him in the arm. So, so legit. Yeah. These misogynistic choices have become so institutionalized to the point that female victims of domestic violence say what they believe you want them to hear, especially in the presence of the abuser. Laundry nicely maneuver the conversations away from the danger Gabby was facing, steering them towards the notion that she was the instigator of a mere lover's pact. Was cool and calm and tried to downplay the incident with Gabby. Do you mind looking up your right sleeve? I'm curious about something. Oh, okay. It's like cool being there. I suppose figure it is, but I'm not complaining. But why did Gabby continue to stay with Brian and continue traveling with him after this? Fear and shame are some of the dominant reasons why women continue to stay with abusers who dominate their lives. I, I am sure that the boyfriend promise it will never happen again as abusers tend to do. Gabby hoped he would change. Of also, victims usually have strong emotional feelings for each other and are perhaps unable to sort these feelings out. Perhaps Gabby was of the view that she did not have enough family or friend support to leave him. This brings us to the role of the police. The role of the police has to be more specific or streamlined. We expect too much from them. We need to have a greater task differentiation among our police. They are overworked, under-equipped and under-resourced. The world moreover has become a more complex place for the structures that currently exist within the police force. The police who responded seemed to be winging it, and the result was catastrophic. This kind of professional bungling cannot be afforded when someone's life is at stake. The story of Gabby Petito throws the spotlight on domestic violence to do going forward. To the we need personal train along the lines of addressing intimate partner abuse. The responders to domestic abuse calls must be healthcare workers as opposed to the run of the male policemen. Outside of this, trained and committed personnel must accompany the police on their investigation of abuse allegations. They should have an advocacy approach is to have the option is to have a branch of the police force assigned to carry out such investigations well since gabby's case is just the tip of the iceberg as can be deduced by the stats in the un report referenced earlier there is need to act post haste to address this issue of domestic violence at times that is a pandemic in our times 
There's an urgent requirement to build coalitions of government and civil society to work to address this issue and to organize advocacy campaigns to raise awareness. There's also a mandate to integrate attention to violence against women into sexual and reproductive health. Further, embarking on social empowerment of women, designing skills program in schools, and engaging men and boys to promote nonviolence and gender equity are effective ways of addressing these issues. Providing early intervention services for families at risk is yet another strategy. Failure to act makes all our concerns disingenuous and Gabby and others like her would have died in vain. This is Ingrid Rizzolo and it has been my talk.